Hey guys, it's uh, me again, and uh, this is another horror uh, video. Thought I'd do something called uh, horror films I like but are hated. First up is the movie Captivity. When I first saw this, I thought this was a uh, saw knockoff, but it's a totally different story concerning this model who, uh, for some reason, always brings her little dog to these uh, events, and then one night uh, she gets drugged, and the uh, next morning or hours later she wakes up in this uh, room with uh, no idea how to get out, and she uh, gets these taunting messages from someone and in one scene she's forced to uh, swallow this concoction in a uh, blender of uh, body parts and shit like that and uh, she meets up with uh, someone, somebody who's also being held captive who uh, turns out later on in the film is uh, one of the uh, uh, people helping the uh, kidnapper in the uh, game that uh, they're playing <coughs> This does have some uh, gruesome scenes in it, and uh, I guess you could say this is uh, part of that whole uh, torture porn uh, scene, and uh, I didn't like the scene where she's uh, forced to uh, kill her uh, dog or else uh, she would get her bl brains blown out. And uh, this is the unrated director's cut of the film, and uh, I didn't really, uh, I didn't like the uh, ending of the director's cut either, but... <coughs> All in all, I thought this was a pretty good film. Next up are some remakes. This is, of course, the Amityville Horror from 2005. And like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake, it's set in the 70s. And, of course, it's the same story. This family moves into this house where a year earlier, <coughs> uh, youth uh, shot his uh, whole family because he claimed that he heard voices and their daughter sees this uh, dead little girl holding a doll only she can see and of course the dad starts to go crazy and uh, I didn't think it was bad either I mean the only problem I had was with the uh, casting of the uh, parents I mean Ryan Reynolds is a little young to be playing George Lutz I mean he was recently in Blade Trinity and uh, he's also done some uh, romantic comedies <coughs> The uh, lady who played Kathy Lesson, she was okay. I mean, she later went on to uh, do Teristas. All in all, pretty good remake. Not a favorite, but pretty good. Next up is The Hitcher from 2007. It's also basically the same storyline, but uh, instead of one character, uh, we got uh, two characters, which is a college couple on their way, uh, I think, to... Uh, <clears throat> some place over in Santa Fe or whatever for a spring break and then they uh, meet up with this uh, psychotic uh, hitchhiker and uh, he taunts them and uh, of course this time they show the uh, <clears throat> drawn and quartering scene with the two trucks but this time it's the guy who gets it and the girl ends up uh, fighting back yeah I can't I can't believe this got many bad reviews. I mean, Sean Bean does a really good performance as the uh, hitchhiker. And this is the uh, Omen remake. I mean, I thought it was pretty good, uh, even though this was the... <coughs> I saw this first, and then I saw the original second. It does uh, kind... it is kind of a shot-by-shot -shot, uh, remake even though uh, some of the death scenes are different like the uh, beheading scene uh, in the original it was a guy gets his uh, head uh, cut off by a pane of glass and the beheading scene is definitely different and uh, the kid was okay I mean the only problem I had was this was Julia Stiles as the mother I mean I think they could have picked somebody much older to play the mother Yeah, all in all a pretty good sequel that uh, didn't get any more sequels from this. And uh, up next are some sequels. This is, of course, Feast 2, uh, Sloppy Seconds. Not many people gave this much love, but I thought it was pretty good. It uh, picks up where the uh, first one leaves off. And it has uh, the uh, biker uh, chick of uh, the uh, 
first biker from the first one who gets killed off uh, trying to find uh, one of the characters from the first one because uh, she blames the uh, guy for her sister's death and of course uh, she meets up with the bartender and uh, they head into this town where they meet up with some other people and I do admit that some of the parts are really gross and disgusting and uh, one scene that's really mediocre is uh, this uh, sleazy ass guy who's uh, been uh, having an affair with this one girl who's been seeing this car salesman um, gets a uh, part of a uh, <coughs> motorcycle pipe through the neck through the top of his head and in the third one he still he's still living and although he can hardly speak in the third one also one little part I didn't like was when he uh, attempts to rescue that baby and then he uh, ends up <coughs> just letting it get killed off. I mean, that's the part I objected to. Uh, anyway, I checked out the third one, and it's pretty good also. Next up is Joyride 2, Dead Ahead. Um, this is pretty good. I mean, it's the storyline's kind of the same, although it's uh, four uh, people uh, on a road trip to a concert over in Las Vegas, and uh, there's this... Uh, girl and her fiance and her sister and they meet up with this uh, goth poser guy she met online anyway uh, their car breaks down and they end up stealing uh, borrowing well stealing his car and then they leave a note and then of course he meets up with them and taunts them and uh, the uh, fiance gets kidnapped and there's a really cool scene with a uh, piece of rebar in spite of the fact that it's basically a rehash of the first one, um, I thought this was pretty good. And I've showed this uh, before. This is, of course, Exorcist Two: The Heretic. This time, Linda Blair is a teenager, and I think she's living in New York City, and she's a dancer. And uh, in this, uh, she has nightmares. And uh, there's also speculation that she wasn't possessed by the devil, but by some... Uh, demon uh, called Pazuzu. Anyway, in spite of some uh, far-fetchedness in this movie, um, I thought it was pretty decent, and uh, I didn't think it was bad at all. Next up is Blade Trinity. Uh, this is the uh, third sequel in the Blade series. Uh, this time, uh, Blade meets up with some more people, and uh, Chris Christopherson's character gets uh, killed off indefinitely, and uh, he meets up with uh, her daughter, and this is the unrated. Uh, this is the unrated version. I mean, at first, I thought that this was PG-13. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I, why I didn't like about this movie. But of course, it's rated R, so I guess I was wrong. It says right here, rated R. This is not a favorite of mine in the series. I mean, there's parts of this I don't like. I mean, I don't like it when uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's character gets killed off in the beginning. I mean, I think uh, she should have escaped and helped the uh, people from the TV show. And also, I did not like Busta Rhymes' performance at all. I mean, I wish he would have just gotten killed off. So, uh, like I had mentioned, this isn't my favorite in the series, but... Uh, I give it a rating of good. Next up, The Hills Have Eyes 2. This is the sequel to the remake from 2006. And I thought this was uh, decent. I mean, it's not as bad as everybody says it is. At least it's not like the uh, r sequel to the original from 1977. There was a, a sequel from 85 that Wes Craven did but uh, it's really bad and this one isn't bad at all and uh, finally um, this is of course the Crow City of Angels this is the second movie in the Crow series <clears throat> I didn't think this was bad at all I mean this time uh, a uh, guy and his uh, son get killed off after witnessing a murder and uh, of course a year later he rises back from the grave I mean this has got some pretty good uh, 
acting in it from uh, the guy, uh, one of the villains was played by uh, <coughs> one of the people who was in one of those Law and Order series back in the 90s and of course Iggy Pop does a damn good job as one of the villains. And uh, last but not least, I've shown this before but uh, not many people showed uh, too much love for this uh, fifth series in the Saw movies. This is of course Saw 5. And I liked how it focused on the uh, Hoffman story. And I see we're running out of time, so hope you've enjoyed it.